All right, so let's look at pronouns. Um, first thing you need to know is a pronoun takes the place of a noun. It kicks that noun out and then gets replaced. It can replace any kind of noun, proper noun, common noun, abstract noun, concrete noun, singular, plural, whatever kind of noun, it'll replace it. Here's an example of how that happens, right? So the teacher is happy today. The teacher is replaced by he. The teacher is no longer in the sentence, but the he refers to that. Um, please take note, a pronoun is not a kind of noun, right? Don't confuse pronouns with proper nouns. A proper noun is a kind of noun, but a pronoun is a completely different, different word, okay? So he replaced he. So let's practice quickly. Let's see if you can find the pronoun. What is it in here? It is I. What is it here? It's you. What is the pronoun here? It is the word us. What is the pronoun here? It's he, and the pronoun here is, of course, it. So pronouns don't need to replace people all the time. It can replace things as well, because things are nouns as well. Let's see this one. It is mine. Mine is the pronoun there. Okay, so there are a lot of different kinds of pronouns, and we're going to go through five of them today. Technically, we're going to go through four, and then a fifth one that looks like a pronoun but isn't actually a pronoun. This gets really hard, so pay attention, and don't worry if you struggle. Just rewatch and try again. You will get it. Okay. First one we're going to look at is subject pronouns. Now, you can memorize them. Here they are on the left right? Um, subject of a sentence, of course, is the thing that does the action. So a subject pronoun is just a pronoun that does the action. Because John kicked the ball, so he does the kicking, and if I replace John, he still kicks the ball, so he is a subject pronoun. Okay, hope you're still with me. So then object pronouns, of course, is the opposite of that. Now an object is something that has the action done to it. And here they are, you can memorize them. Me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. Uh, the kind of pronoun replaces the object of a sentence. So here, the ball is kicked. The ball is not doing the kicking. So the ball is the object of the sentence. So I replace the ball with the word it. And therefore, it is still the object of the sentence. Um, I hope you're still with me there. So we have subject pronouns and object pronouns. All right, let's go through some examples. Look at the word that's underlined and tell me what you think the answer is. If I go too fast, you can pause the slideshow or the video and then try and think of the answer before I say the answer. Number one. Is subject pronoun. It's doing the action. Number two is also a subject pronoun. So those ones will always be he is always a subject pronoun. I is always a subject pronoun. Number three, subject pronoun. As I said, I will always be a subject pronoun. Number four, object pronoun, right? So them is not meeting, them is being met, right? The action is being done to them, so it is the object. Number five. Subject pronoun again, right? Because we is doing the action. Must is an action, it's a modal verb. Study is an action, it's doing the action, so it is a subject pronoun. Number six. Us is the object pronoun, right? It's a little bit of a trickier one because it's got a preposition there. It's technically the object of the preposition, but that still makes it a kind of object. 
Oh, number seven. It is a subject pronoun because is is a linking verb, but it's still a verb. So it is doing that action of is. There's the verb in the sentence. Then number eight, please don't touch it. That's an object pronoun because it is being touched, right? Now there isn't technically a subject in that sentence. Um, there's an implied subject of you should not touch it, but it is still the object there. Number nine, you must come with me. Subject, again, must being a verb there, come is the verb, so you is doing the action. Number 10, me is an object pronoun, always will be an object pronoun. Okay, let's move on. Now, this is the one that isn't a pronoun, but that looks like a pronoun, which is why I'm telling you about this, so you don't get confused by these. Here they are, my, your, his, her, it's, our, your, and their. It looks like a pronoun, but it's actually an adjective. So let me show you how. It shows that someone owns something, right? Possessive, possession, right? It means to own, something belongs to you. So it is in front of a noun and describes a noun. And this is important, right? A pronoun replaces a noun. An adjective describes a noun. So the one gets rid of the noun, the other one sits next to the noun. So here we go. I broke her pencil. So pencil is still there. It hasn't been replaced. Her is describing the pencil. That's why it's an adjective, okay? Her describes the pencil, right? It looks like a pronoun, but it's not. It's a possessive adjective. Here's another example. He went to my house. My describes the house, right? It doesn't replace the house, so it's an adjective, right? Possessive adjective. So we've had Subject pronoun, object pronoun, and possessive adjective. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but just try to stay with me. Number four, possessive pronoun. So this is why I'm, I'm telling you about the possessive adjective, because there's two kinds of possessives. There's a possessive adjective and a possessive pronoun, right? So here they are, mine, yours, his, hers, ours, yours, theirs. Now, a lot of them... If I, if I were to go back to the other one, they're basically the possessive adjective that got an S. Your gets an S. Your changes to yours. Her changes to hers. Our changes to ours. And I'll show you how it's used. Um, often it's the end of the sentence. Not always. Right. Often has an S, except for mine. Right. Mine doesn't have an S. That pencil is hers. Right. Instead of saying her pencil, so the hers is not connected to that. It's technically connected, but it's on its own. Don't break yours, right? So that is on its own. Yours is a pronoun, a possessive. So it's still showing ownership, but it's not describing a noun directly. Instead of saying like your pencil, I'm saying yours, right? So it's a thing, it's a noun, it's a pronoun, okay? Um, and you can see how they replace a noun. They don't describe it. So keep those in mind. We've done subject pronoun, object pronoun, possessive adjective, and possessive pronoun. Right. So you can study them from this list, right? Um, but there are a few tricky ones. For example, his, right, looks the same as, an, as a possessive adjective and a possessive pronoun, and mine doesn't get an S, where the rest of them gets an S. Okay. Let's practice. I love my school. That's a possessive adjective. The my is describing the school. Number two. Also a possessive adjective because the hour is describing the coach. Number three. Theirs is a pronoun. You see, there's not a noun that comes after it that it's describing. And it has that S, which you can memorize, right? Number four. Mine will always be a possessive pronoun. Number five. Ours on its own has got the S, possessive pronoun. Number six. Possessive adjective here. So ours is on its own, but your land, your is describing the land. It's next to that noun land, so it's an adjective, possessive adjective. Number seven. Yours. 
possessive pronoun. It's on its own. Number eight. As I said, mine will always be a possessive pronoun. You can memorize that. Number nine. Possessive adjective again. Our team, right? So the team is being described by the word our, so it's in possessive adjective. Number 10. There is a possessive adjective because it describes the team once again, right? It describes the team, so it's an adjective. Number 11. Also a possessive adjective because it's describing the ball, right? Number 12. Possessive adjective again, the your is describing the hand. There's no S there, so it is a possessive adjective. Number 13. His is a possessive adjective. It's describing the ball. Number 14. Possessive pronoun. Now you're looking at these two and you're saying, that his is a possessive adjective, but this his is a possessive pronoun. How do I know? Well, the one... If it is on its own, then it will be a pronoun. But if it is together with a noun it's describing, then it is that possessive adjective. So those two do get confusing. All right, our last one is our reflexive pronoun. And this one's quite easy. If you read them down here, you'll see they always have self or selves, and that's how you recognize them. So they're very, very easy to recognize, very easy to use. What are they? Um, it's a pronoun that ends in self or selves, and it's used when the subject and the object of a sentence are the same. What that means is, is that if you say, I saw myself in the mirror, I is the same person as myself, right? So, but I is doing the seeing and myself is being seen. So I is the subject and myself is the object, but they both are technically the same person. And that's when you use a reflexive pronoun right? Here's another one. You must know yourself. Yourself there being a reflexive pronoun. Okay, let's get to our last activity. Right. Well, it's our second last activity. So say which reflexive pronoun goes into each sentence. Okay, I'll load them all up. Okay, so the first one I'll show you there, I love to play games by myself. That's number two. We played so badly, we lost two. Ourselves. She tried to forgive herself. I built my car all by myself. Johnny and I traveled to Cape Town all by ourselves. Mark, number six, Mark loves comic books and he buys his comic books for himself. The cheetah doesn't need a group. It can survive all by itself. The other team didn't want to practice with us. They practiced by themselves. There you go. Okay, so that's quite easy to know what reflexive pronoun to use there. All right, let's throw it all together. If you do need a cheat sheet, if the rules are a little difficult, you can study this list or look at this list when doing activities. Take a screenshot um, and use it so you can see, you can literally just check, right? Because if you look at the first row here, I, me, my, mine, and myself, you can memorize them. I will always be a subject pronoun. Me will always be an object pronoun. My will always be a possessive adjective, mine will be a possessive pronoun always, and myself will always be a reflexive pronoun. So you can memorize them in this list so that you know, or you can use the rules I taught you. Just be careful if you memorize this list, you'll see the second row, you and you are the same. Uh, and in the third row here, his and his, and in the fourth row, her and her, and in the fifth row, it and it. So this isn't a foolproof list. You can use it, but it might actually make things a little more confusing. So try to practice the rules so you get it correct. All right. Um, let's go to our next one. All right. So putting it all together, can you recognize what each of the underlined words is? So number one is... 
possessive adjective. Number two, possessive adjective, it's describing the eyes. Number three, object pronoun, me will always be an object pronoun. Number four, subject pronoun, I will always be a subject pronoun because it is doing the action. Number five, her is an object pronoun because the action is being done to it, to her. Number six, reflexive pronoun, myself. Right, that one's very easy. Number seven, possessive, the there is describing the ship, possessive adjective. Number eight, subject pronoun. It is doing the action. Number nine, possessive pronoun. Our has an S, so it is not connected to another noun. It is showing possession, but on its own. Number 10, reflexive pronoun. It's got that selves on it. Number 11, mine will always be a possessive pronoun. Number 12, Yours will also always be a possessive pronoun. And number 13, subject pronoun. It's doing the action. Number 14, reflexive pronoun. It's got that self. So I hope this has explained everything. This is just something you have to practice. You have to memorize some of them. You have to practice the rules to get used to all these hordes of pronouns. Okay, thank you.